All right, so yeah, it's raining, so no solar. So let's do a battery capacity test and my standby generator, poor man's standby generator, because the next trailer, I'm just trying to decide if it's worth having an onboard generator with the fuel cell. Spoiler, it's probably gonna happen, but you know, we're just seeing, I'm just seeing how I like it and seeing what, you know, if it's worth it. So let's get into it. All right, we're wearing pink because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. If you know anybody that might be at risk in your family or your friends, make sure you tell them to go get checked out. You just, you just never know, right? Yep. I love you, Mama. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the video. All right, guys. So I've been, I carry around the uh, Predator 3500 inverter generator with me as a kind of a makeshift poor man's onboard generator for the trailer itself. You can see, you know, just turn it on, plug an eight, uh, extension cord into the charger. I don't run it through the inverter just because the, uh, the DeWalt charger actually runs, I think like 30 or some amps, 30, I think 30 of max 30 amps. So a little better, uh, you know, a little faster charge for the uh, battery bank, the six deep cycles I have now. Granted, you know, they're only probably gonna accept maybe half of that, maybe 20 amps or so because they're lead acid. But <clears throat> I wanted to see what this was like I've used it a couple times and it's been crazy. You know, it's cloudy here in Michigan, so not too much sun to the solar. If I didn't need, you know, anything but light, solar would be plenty, but obviously I'm charging batteries and everything like that. So we're gonna get into the battery test. This is basic, just basic, uh, just off what I have on the trailer as far as batteries. Um, see what I can run, what I can charge. Um, and you'll, you know, you'll see exactly what I can do off of, you know, complete full state of charge from the battery bank six deep cycle batteries 690 amps total so you only get about 30 or half of that as far as usable amps because it's again lead acid technology so let's get right into it now we're gonna basically run the entire trailer down to empty we're gonna charge all my stuff i got some i got some amp hours of batteries that are dead we're gonna run some direct tv we're gonna see how far this battery bank can last me all right so let's get going nothing connected so we're not you know Inverter is not connected to shore power. And all we're running off is, we're running, I'll throw the little picture up. 59 watts right now is what we're pulling in, but it's it's gonna be raining all day. So uh, we are currently at 13.7, which it'll fall, it's fully charged. These are all DC deep cycle batteries. So let's turn lights on, let's turn the inverter on. And just in case you guys forgot, we have six deep cycles, one, two, three, four, five, six in there, 3000 watt pure sign inverter, uh, MPPT charge controller, and you know, all the goodies right there. So I gotta fix, gotta fix that stuff right there though. Anyways, so inverter's on. Let's make sure this is on. Yep, we got that taken care of. So. This is what I this is what I could get. Uh, we, you know, didn't charge anything over the week. Plus, I just did a bunch of DC voltage dumping. I just you know kept a couple of tools on and basically just dumped out a couple of twelve volt or twelve amp hour batteries through the blower and vacuum. And so I could just kind of we have about one hundred and fifty five amp hours of charging uh, bad, dead batteries here. I don't have anything else besides the Milwaukee. I just you know one. Uh, a couple pairs of Makita, but no DeWalt. I did try to uh, cut use my uh, three seven and a quarter saw to maybe you know get a DeWalt battery in in this mix here. But I did like eighty cuts and it was still at full charge pretty much. But it was registering, so it wasn't worth my time. I did you know left some lights on, so you got a couple extra here. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get charged up too over here as well. But um, this one is a, another eight amp hour and it's at so we're at four amps on that one as well. So let's go ahead and add these. We're just gonna do a load. There we go. So you guys can see, yes, all of it works at the same time. I do have a bunch of, a uh, couple uh, iPads here, my daughter's iPads. My business phone's pretty much dead. And a couple other ones here, we're gonna, we're gonna use uh, the inverter power to actually charge as well. So we're gonna hook those all up and we'll just keep going. 
All right, so we are charging. Everything's charging. Over here, we've got everything's still charging, including another iPad. Then we've got good old Direct TV working. So lights are on. This is this is pretty much more than I would ever have it on a job site because this never gets to this point on a job site. If it does. Um, either, I mean, I think maybe once I was working on a deck and I just, you know, we were just tired and, um, this is about half the batteries that I have from Milwaukee. So I have the rest of these in here, plus whatever's on tools and whatever's on the job site and whatever's being used right now. So that's basically it. We're going to run this through and now I'm going to try to make a, another little shelf here for my pack out. I'll put one right here. Uh, cause I got the extra up there. These ones are all going to be, this is going to be the tool. This is the tool one. Got a review coming out on this pretty soon. Uh, that's just the, uh, sockets. Those are metric and standard, but put another one right there and we'll just, just clean up, get ready for the work week here. So let's get to it. All right, no surprise, the rapid charger's first one done. Just to keep them going. Let's put a 12 amp out on here. Everything else is still charging. TV's still going. Everything's working just fine. Trucking along. 11.5, 11, 11.6 11, under load. Way high, that's fine. That's that's your deep cycle. It needs to stay above 10.5 under under load because that's they, i've never actually had it lower than i think 11 one but just just in case just so you guys know Side note, we're still charging here, guys. We got all of these taken care of. We're still we're still heading in the right direction. But just in case you guys wanted to know, uh, the Direct TV receiver, it's a wireless receiver and a small TV. It'll take you at about 40, 47, 47 watts, 48 watts. We'll call it 50 watts just in case. So there we go. Based on what we've seen from our, our replay angles. Yeah. All right, guys. Looks like we're getting close. We still have these batteries and then what's on here. So two, one, one, these ones. I would just swap these out. So you can hear my in, my inverter beeping at me. So we're getting down. Yeah, we're it's gonna shut off here in a second. We're at 10, 6, 10, 7 right now. That's gonna be all the way down. Try to keep it above 40, 50% depth of discharge because they're lead acid batteries. So what we got charged was all of these, um, you know, phone, some lights, all this. Let's go 12, 36, so 18. I can't add, but yeah, there we go. It just shut off. So that's it. We are done. Inverter just did this auto shut off and we're good. All right. So 88 amp hours of batteries charged plus you know, whatever's in here, plus iPads and all that kind of stuff, all that jam. Now, keep in mind, we just, uh, um, it just turned itself off. So we powered, obviously, 50, 50 watts is nothing, not that much. But you got to keep in mind, this whole thing, when it, when it goes up, it's about a kilowatt hour per hour when it's charging everything. But we weren't, we were mostly just doing uh, Milwaukee stuff. Each of these lights are 14 watts a piece. And so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And there's hardly any solar going on right now. So I'm actually pleased with it. That's, I mean, you got to think 
I've never used it this hard ever. This is actually the first time I've actually used it to when it actually shuts itself off. So yeah, that is, that's all I've got for this. All right, guys, audio sucked last one. So we're going to go do it again here. It did turn off. I did put the, my charger back on and we've got, these are pretty much one bar or two bars. And you know, we, we got enough, like I think it's like 90 some amp hours charged up plus my lights, plus all the iPads. We've got, I think, 14 lights, 15, 14 to 16 lights, plus the under cabinet lights. These are 14 watts a piece, plus all these right here, running continuously. Got the direct TV running as well. Um, that's actually, I mean, that was more than I was expecting because I only got 690 amp hours of DC and it's it's not efficient converting that 12 volts to 100 and you know 120 volts to get to here to charge everything. So super inefficient, but basically i never have this um this many dead batteries at one time anyway so uh it is what it is you know the yeah you're looking at 50 watts for the tv which is nothing and then uh this will actually take up this entire charging system right here if i have everything running at one time it's a thousand watts i'm almost a thousand watts i want to say like not eight nine hundred watts um to charge this entire bank if everything's charging at one time so almost a kilowatt per hour so that's that's i mean that's that's a lot right there for as well uh if anybody's wondering yes my compressor does not uh start with the inverter so it does not start that's actually going to be temporary uh that's just there so um you know i can air up stuff right now because my other compressors are actually being warrantied out right now by milwaukee and yeah that's how we that's <laughs> that's basically it so uh we're at about five hours here so five hours of running everything tv lighting charging everything at one time uh that's more than enough for standby i absolutely am you know that's that's fantastic it's exactly what i want i've never actually had it beeping where it actually shut itself off that's lowest i've ever dropped and drawn those battery bank it's never gotten that far plus we are we're looking at less than 100 watts of solar right now because it's a cloudy day here in michigan so that's basically the gist of it all in all we'll give you my uh final thoughts on it and we'll go from there All right, you guys got to see, I mean, pretty, pretty crazy, pretty great. Um, as far as what I could charge, what I could do with the battery bank and hardly any solar coming in because it's been, it was a cloudy day when I did that. Um, it's raining, it's raining right now, like it was before as well. So it is what it is. Uh, onboard generator, definitely probably going to be the, uh, another modification I do to the next, or another add on to the next trailer. A couple things, um, you, you can DIY it, um, uh, put your own little, you know, you can put the predator generator I have now in there but I'm going to, I want something remote start, something easy. That way I can just flip a switch, you know, turn, you know, turn a fuel pump on and then hit, you know, start. And then the generator goes and I can keep going, doing what I need to do. And also having it larger than 3000, you know, it's probably going to be like a seven, 7,000, uh, you know, seven KW inverter generator in case I need to power anything that has more amps because, you know, down the road, better to have it and not need it. So there's a couple of ways of going about it. There's a lot of things you can do, uh, own in, uh, I know a Predator makes another uh, 9,500 inverter generator as well, but I want to keep it to the point where I, I have six deep cycle batteries that probably weigh like 70 pounds a piece. Really, they're they're pretty they're pretty heavy, maybe maybe less, but and they're pretty they're pretty heavy. So if you got six of those, that's that's a lot of weight up there. Plus an, an uh, pure sign inverter for my aims. I mean, if I just took out uh, those deep cycle batteries, maybe one or two lithium ion batteries 12 volt lithium ion batteries for whatever i need plus the generator itself and the solar panel up top on the roof i'm not going to get rid of the solar on the next trailer because um, it is very convenient i'm not putting any more solar panels additional but um, right now i could double or triple my um my output for my solar system on top of the trailer if i just add more panels but that again you know takes away from ladder space up there because i need storage for ladders it's a tool trailer not 
a solar trailer per se. That's all I got for this little uh, experiment. Uh, onboard generators, let me know what you guys think. I think it's a home run so far. It's been working out great. Just need a little easier way of, you know, making sure, making it super convenient for me to turn the generator on to make sure everything's powered up. Um, and then also have an in onboard fuel cell. So underneath, uh, put a fuel cell with a pump and then a way to fill it up. That way you, you can carry an extra, you know, the, you have your own, you don't need to, you know, open up a door to fill it. You can just, you know, put the hose right in, the um, spigot right in and then fill it up just like you would with a vehicle. They do make those, it would be an add-on, but I think it'd definitely be worth it. So yeah, anyways, like and subscribe you guys. I'll see you in the next video, I appreciate it.